Oh boy, boy, oh boy. You okay, bud? You okay? <laughs> We're kicking it off. We're no, they just they they took my um, <laughs> laptop from me. They wanted me to put my water bottle on the ground. <laughs> my bottle. <laughs> my bottle. Sound off in the comments if you like Emil's new water bottle. Yeah, he's, sound He's off. gonna need some stickers, so send them to his. Yeah. Uh, send them to the so studio. My PO box. We we have a special guest. In case you didn't notice, we have Kyla Scanlon, none other than. Welcome, yeah. welcome, Kyla. Thanks for having me. The in studio audience is going absolutely nuts. Yeah, they're, <laughs> would you guys shut up? There's a truck beeping, <laughs> and we got a dynamite episode for you, gang. So I guess we can kick it right off. We got this. I thought that it, I, I mistakenly thought. What did I think it was? Cheesecake Factory or no? Chili's. What's the other restaurant? When I texted you, not Tex- Applebee's. Texas Roadhouse. No, no, it was it was. Uh, uh, Fuck, who cares? Well, either way, it's Applebee's. You thought it was Red Lobster. Yeah, I thought it was Red Lobster. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because Red they're, Lobster was the restaurant that did the all-you-can-eat shrimp yeah, last year. Yeah, they're owned by the same company. Up. Oh, yeah, that's right. Same it, thing. Is it Yum Brands? I think so. Well, or no, no. It might be res- some Restaurant kind of, Brands International, I think. Yeah. Wow, Man. come up with a better name. Ticker symbol Eat, I think, is Ooh. there. One of them is that. I remember in 2020, at the bottom of the market, I bought... I bought. I just thought it was fun to buy all ticker symbols with um, words, like eat. What'd you end up with? I bought eat car Jack. Eat car Jack. <laughs> and you know what? And then I sold them Jack. Jack in the box ended up ten xing. Uh, eat did you know two or three x? And then uh, car actually went from like five bucks That's to four hundred. For no, Avis, it was yeah. Yeah, Avis. Hertz is in the toilet. Hertz is struggling. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, the whole Tesla debacle. Yep. That EV well, thing, yeah. yeah, EV, and they came out of bankruptcy. Yeah. In 2021, and yeah, it's hard to be Hertz. Yeah, it hurts, it hurts to be hard. It hurts, don't it? You remember Hertz? <laughs> I do. Don't it? Don't do it. I'm not gonna do it. I I don't do like. You know what hurts don't it? Huh? Do you like donuts? <laughs> <laughs> It was a thing that little boys would do to each other. Do, do you like donuts? I, I don't actually eat donuts. Oh, great. Great. It wouldn't work on you. <laughs> wow. Remind me not to try a knock-knock joke on you. Uh, no, then what would they do? Twist your nipple or punch you? Yeah, you... Oh, you, no, you say, do you like Hertz donuts? And then and then you're meant to go, I've never had a Hertz donut. And then you punch him and you go, Hertz donut. <clears throat> Yeah, we went to we went just to and smile. <laughs> we what? We went to high school in the fifties. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, so we got uh, so Applebee's is doing. Um, you know that it sold out in less than a minute. Really, I'm I didn't. Surprised. The the they people were freaking out because people were like, I went on within thirty seconds, they were all gone. Wow. Well, yeah. let's tell the people what it is. They're they're getting onto mm-hmm. the subscription train. Because yeah. that's the only way to have a business, a functioning business model these days. It's a two hundred dollar date night subscription. That's what they're calling it, date night. I feel like a jerk because when we were talking about this, I said, "Who the fuck wants to go to Applebee's?" And then it sold out. Yeah, well, so it, it comes with caveats. It is a it costs you two hundred dollars, and it entitles you to. Uh, go to Applebee's. You can go as much as you want, but you uh, can only use this thing once a week. Every week, you can go and spend thirty dollars worth. You get thirty dollars worth of food and non-alcoholic and bev. non-alcoholic beverages. So obviously, their game plan is: well, these fucking these they'll pig, spend the money on alcohol. These piggies yeah. are going to spend money on alcohol because it's hey, it's free food. Why am I not going to buy a beer or a margarita? <laughs> and then also, you're probably with inflation. What are you going to get for thirty dollars, huh? A Caesar salad? No, no, they have like the specials. Applebee is known for like the two for twenty. Are, Are you? You, <laughs> you eat Applebee's? No. Oh, okay. I just, I, you know, I know business. Models. She knows about it. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. What do you get two for twenty? Um, you're asking questions I don't know the answer to. Oh man. Well, but you I, get like two meals for twenty dollars. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder if this, if if it excludes but, those kind of things, you can't combine it with any other offers, in the fine print. Oh. I, I haven't checked, but that's I let's just assume that you can. So damn, you get your money's worth. I think so, right? So a bunch of little sickos are going out there. My uh, my money is on the idea yeah. that Applebee's executives are going, our food is such dog shit that anyone who comes hoping to eat thirty dollars worth every single week is gonna be so disappointed after week three that they're just not gonna come back. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's probably i mean i mean i couldn't eat there once a week and they're probably using the old food that's like the the stuff that's on the way out that they're gonna throw it's away more anyway. It's a status symbol than anything. Oh yeah, big time yeah. status symbol. So just another thing you're gonna need if you want to date in 2024. You got you got Does your, your AMC. Man have an Applebee's <laughs> subscription. subscription. <laughs> yeah, and an AMC Stubbs membership. Ooh, no, that's Dylan. one hell of a date. You get to skip. You get to go to the the veritable. <laughs> it's not really called that, is it? No. <laughs> Not called the what? I mean, you you put in here that that uh, people are spending more money on restaurants, and I'm one of yeah, those. I'm are. a I'm a DoorDash freak, in in part because I get a I th- I think it's on my American. No, no, no. That's I I get a fifteen dollar a month credit with my American Express Gold Card on Grubhub, and then I also get a fifteen dollar a month credit on Uber Eats through my American mm-hmm. Expl- Express Platinum Card. So I do be ordering from from those services and then other times during the week man it's just so effing convenient i'm like yeah i'll pay six you're getting, extra dollars you're the person getting roped in by these benefits yeah I you're am. spending more money i'm spending more money but being like oh it feels like i'm saving money yes absolutely 100 loser consumer i am a i am a loser consumer by the way we are we are working on merch folks and loser consumer is going to be one of those things patent pending yeah trademark trademark all of that shit um but it's uh it it's are you are you using them all doordash uber eats anything i use i use grubhub once a month at the beginning of the month because i know that i've got the credit um at the end of every month the uber eats thing hits and i use that and then throughout the week throughout the month if i'm hungry i default to doordash because it's it's the best user interface it's just the the best i i find it the best doordash yeah wait can i tell you i just remembered when I, i went to new york last week I pulled out Uber to get my Uber. It said it was $67. I was already pissed about the $67. I was like, fuck, it's kind of expensive. To go from the airport to your place? Mm-hmm. That's cheaper than it's been. Okay, great. And then I was like, I'm going to close my eyes. I woke up at like four in the morning to get to LAX. And then I woke up and we were on like, I was like, where the fuck are we? It took, it, it took so long. It said we were going to get there at five o'clock. I got there at 5.50. And then I got an email that said, thanks for riding with Uber. And it said it was $141. And I was like, what the fuck? It but, runs a meter. Yeah. But so I think he just took me for a ride because I closed my eyes. And you then got, I contacted Uber. And you they, got fleeced. I did, but they changed it back. Do either of you have Uber One? I did for a bit because I got a free version of it and then let it expire. It's the, it, And that's just yet another subscription thing. Right. Everybody's got a damn subscription. Who do you think is going to be next to the this dumbest thing to offer a subscription? I bet it's going to be surprised. I bet it's going to be like serious. If I were uh, an enterprising young. You know what is the dumbest one that's already happening? You just interrupted me, but go ahead. Go for it. No, give me, give me yours. I'm just razzing you. I don't uh, care. Because you asked the question and then you're yeah, like, yeah. I'll answer it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because I had one teed up. I think it's cereal, by the way. I think General Mills or something is going to be like, hey, Isn't you can. Isn't that su- the Magic Puff thing? The Magic, Magic Spoon? spoon. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that subscription? I think. Yeah, it's it like fifteen dollars a box. That's insane, and it's delicious. But I'm not paying it. I'm I, not I think it. people hate it, right? I love it. I th- I love it personally, but I famously have really bad taste, apparently, according to most people. Which one do you think is gonna happen? Uh, it's already happening, and it's I think the, by far the worst one is the the one they're doing with cars, where they're like, if you want to use certain features. It's going to be... Oh, yeah. Right. GM. Can yeah. you imagine buying a car and it's like, it has the capability to do it, but you want us to turn it on? I think BMW... That's another 60 bucks. I think BMW is... is They're all doing it. Yeah. It, it, and Automatic it, locks? Give us another 50 bucks a month, chump. Adobe was famously probably the first outside of uh, like the, the usual suspects, like telecom, your, your cell Spacey, phone, your internet. Uh, Kevin Billy Spacey? <laughs> what the hell? Is- you said the usual suspects. Oh, <laughs> god damn it, man! <laughs> Who's it? Antonio Banderas? Isn't it? No, Billy Baldwin. Keep going. Uh, you got two. Kevin Pollak, I think. Yeah, yeah, he's in it. Anyway, <laughs> it was uh, um, Adobe, and I remember Kyle. I'm sure you remember when Adobe rolled out their <laughs> subscription thing because it was it was Don't huge you? news. <laughs> You don't it was remember. so long ago. 
Okay, thanks Wait, for what? aging me. It was like 2011. I was in high school. I was 2013. High school. Okay. <laughs> I was in college. Actually, I was in middle school, I think. Really? <laughs> well, anyway, I, re- I remember when Kyla, they rolled it out. you certainly remember this thing. Well, because I, I had a pirated version of Photoshop. Kyla was, was editing video in middle school. <clears throat> I, re- well, I remember getting it. Were you? Yeah. Oh, great. I remember getting a photo of a Photoshop and I was very excited. And then getting a Photoshop, yeah, getting Photoshop. And a couple of weeks later they roll out the subscription model and I it's realized it's really expensive too. Yeah. Isn't it like a hundred dollars a month but for yeah. one product? If you lie yeah. and tell me you're a student, you can get it for free. But now they check your email. Oh yeah. Back when I did, they didn't. Yeah. They'll send an email to your email. Uh, Fucked up. Yeah. It's uh, and I, I, it's one of those things where God, I wish I had known back because all I knew was every designer friend that I had was really pissed off. And they said, yeah. I'm not going to be a customer anymore. But where There's else no were they? There was no alternative. I'm at the time, on. well, at the time, there was Final Cut for mm-hmm. a video. But then Apple abandoned Final Cut. Yeah. And at the time, it was the industry industry standard. Yeah. It's interesting. Like, it's either advertising or subscription models that mm-hmm. the brands have to rely on. Sometimes both. Yeah, like Netflix, for example, yeah. like they're going to start running ads. Amazon, Amazon running ads. Mm-hmm. But Hulu. they also have a subscription model. And yeah. I don't know. It's just like every time you turn around, you're being fed some sort of ad or you have to like pay a premium to access something. And I really think it wears on people. It would be great if right here was one of the YouTube mid roll ads yeah. where it just started and it was for some shit like Adobe. That would just be too poetic. We have no control over that, by the way. What? No, oh, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, but. Yeah, you, you guys hit on a good point, which is that thank you. they got us <laughs> roped in first with these promises of, oh, you subscribe and you don't have to pay for ads. But then I don't, it's not that there's no alternative, but it's just that they lull you into this laziness kind of comfort. You know, you've got, once you're already plugged in, once you've already got a prime subscription, you're not gonna you're not gonna yeah i had to, I had to burp everybody because <laughs> famously now amazon is, is i i nice? think they're char i mean the the amount that they're charging is negligible it's like three extra dollars to not get ads speak but for still, yourself man you don't want those ads i don't know if i'm gonna make rent this week <laughs> but most people will deal with the ads right like most people won't pay the extra three dollars yeah i'll endure them i don't mind that's when you check your phone yeah, exactly. Or oh, you get up and so go bad pee. For your brain. What? Like, I don't know. It's just like the. I don't know. I just think like bouncing back I just and think forth. it's all screen, so bad screen. for us, and it just makes me sad. Yeah. Yeah. Big so, screen, yeah. small screen, medium speed screen. When you make, <laughs> when you wake up, you don't look at screen, huh? I I totally look at screen. Oh. Yeah. Which one? Phone. 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 First thing oh. in the morning. Phone and then laptop. Yeah. yeah. Are yeah. you the type that's uh, you 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 hate it, but you are so hopelessly dependent on it that there's nothing that you can do <laughs> isn't that everyone well it's just like yeah. i have to check my email and then i have to check my text and then i have to check twitter and then i have to check instagram mm-hmm. you know like check the comments and so you just you just check do you sleep mm. with your phone in the room it's my alarm so yeah mm. yeah yeah well so anyway uh it's just another subscription thing because they are just they we're all cows and they just want to milk us or goats depending on what kind of milk you prefer or cheese do you think we have a lot of goat milk fans in the audience probably there's <clears> some <throat> freaks out goat cheese fans definitely 100 percent. sure i didn't but it's <clears throat> it's endemic to i don't know our consumption habits are such that they've they really have successfully i don't know trained us to accept this kind of thing as the norm where subscriptions are just the way to go because even now even though i know it's not cost effective necessarily i'm still inclined to do it it's also funny because it's all all these people are like we're disruptors we're tech we're changing the way you do things but it all just always comes back to full circle and it's like it's actually exactly the way you used to do it where now it used to be like we're gonna have all your uh, content in one place and it's like nope now there's going to be different yeah. channels and it's going to cost more than cable did and yeah. it's going to have ads again it's going to be just like cable I mean all those like subscription things you're talking about like even fucking Harry's razors or whatever the fuck they're like we're changing how you do it the, the razors come right to your house and now they're just like in Walgreens mm-hmm. they it's, don't disrupt it's just the same fucking thing yeah yeah can you speak to so Netflix reported today? Speaking of subscriptions and speaking of their yeah, they bought raw. They oh, they bought 
what is Raw? Um, it's I think an arm of WWE. It's like their best selling or their most popular TV series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they spent five billion dollars. <laughs> five billion dollars. <laughs> five billion dollars on Raw. Uh, yeah, over the course of ten years. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, but like, it's I don't know. It's um, people really like live wrestling. Yeah. Yes. Have you ever read the? I think it's Roland Barthes' piece on how wrestling and politics are similar. No. Yeah. Hmm. So in the piece, he's talking about like how people want to be entertained, and so the worldwide entertainment or world wrestling entertainment. Yeah. Right. Um, that's what they do. It's like it's scripted. It's not real sports. It's just people sort of like beating each other up. Um, and people really like that. And so Netflix bought the rights to that. I think it'll start streaming in 2025. Um, and yeah, Netflix said that they would never do this sort of live thing. But more and more so the streaming services are starting to. Do yeah. They, I think the first thing they tried it with was the Chris Rock mm -hmm. stand up special. Yeah. I mean, they also famously said that they wouldn't do ads i mean they yeah. they were putting that off for the longest time but it was inevitable that they would have to do it and the way they would do it is exactly what they did offering yeah. a lower t a lower price point if you are willing to accept ads. what sucks about the lower price because i would do that but then they cap you at like 720p uh quality wise yeah. and i i need my That's 1080 good enough for me man no it's not I like it a little blurry it's yeah <laughs> it still looks good but yeah well, and they just so they beat on earnings today did they have earnings today? Yeah. Yeah. By by quite a wide margin. The stock's up, I want to say 70 points or something. No, it can't be that much. It's It was up to like 530 after hours the last I checked. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. They, they were supposed to make a lot of money on people signing up for subscriptions, mm -hmm. right? I don't know if you... I didn't they see They did. It. They beat... They, I believe they added... Yeah, 13 million subscribers. They added 13 just million? Just from Raw? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> just in general. Okay. Yeah, and Raw. the Raw deal was announced today. Oh. Yeah. Damn. Um, and that's what the street was looking for is like how many of the subs are the um, ad wrestling tier? Wrestling fans. Yeah. Well, sure. But so you can, you won't be able to watch WWE anywhere else but Netflix now? No, I think it's just the Raw, just the raw one. Gotcha. Yeah. I don't understand that. I don't know the difference. Dude, they're different like... Sure. I mean, I still remember NWO or oh, whatever. Oh, dude, don't even talk to me about the NWO. I don't. I don't know who was on that. I don't know. Kyla, did did you? Are you a wrestling person? Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Mm. <laughs> 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 he got yes. appointed to the board of somebody. Of uh, yeah. Oh God! I, I think just of saw... WWE or yeah. Netflix. Sorry that I don't know the answer to that. No, he was appointed um, to the board of of of. Um, it was a. It's a publicly traded thing today. Um. God damn it. I was just going to say something about uh, WWE. Yeah, about NWO. Or oh, I, I saw a wrestling match once live. And can I tell you? Like a real professional WWE I went to one? I went to one at Madison Square Garden, and I sat up in, in the nosebleeds. And there they got the music playing, and everybody's getting hyped nice. up. But then once it starts, it's just quiet. Because you don't have like you have on TV with the roar of the crowd and the announcers and the sound. It's just like two guys down there and you just kind of hear thunk. Oh, thunk. you don't hear it's, the it's announcers? Just, yeah, it's just like it's you, you just all of a sudden the music stops and you're watching and you're just like, oh. And there oh, was this, are people at least hooting and hollering? Oh, yeah. There was a kid next to me who was probably ah, 15 and was with his buddy. And uh, at one point during the show, one of the wrestlers – got someone out of the crowd and like kicked his ass that's sick. and it was a big thing and obviously it was a plant and the guy was an actor and stuff but the kid next to me was just saying to his brother he's like is this real is this really happening whoa is this real and <laughs> it was very endearing i was like oh it's still it works they still <laughs> i'll tell you what i went to the i forget what they're called the the one in mexico city is the the lucha oh, doors the lucha libre yeah lucha libre and um I was like, this isn't going to be that fun. It's going to be literally five minutes in. I'm just like out of my seat, like banging the seat in front of me, just like changing, like, bah. I'd never heard of these people. I was so invested. It's like, it's incredible. Yeah. And they like brought out this old wrestler out of retirement. And it's obviously he's so out of shape and stuff, but everyone's so jacked up and stuff. Incredible. I couldn't tell it wasn't real. Yeah. Uh, well, let's shift gears. We talked about subscriptions. Um, 
Applebee's. I wish we could have bought an Applebee's thing. I, I, I would have, I would have actually liked to have gotten that just to go check it out. Just to go check it out. Yeah. Just to see what it's like it's to give someone a car bucks and get $30. And that's in, it's like the novelty of it. I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> for the audio listener they're laughing because i keep on having to turn away from the microphone to burp but it's nice for me because it's usually just me and i have to go like yeah that's what a normal person is like well and i'm doing it away from the mic and i'm making it silent because i'm courteous but i think that a lot the, the more like if you're suffering or or forgotten company that's not really cutting edge I feel like you got to lean into the novelty. Dude, come on. They're eating good in the neighborhood. This is, is that middle yeah. America. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And they really do like it. If you're in middle America, if you like Applebee's, <laughs> go nuts in those comments. Personally, not for me. Or um, if you're a coastal elite, also go nuts in the comments. Yeah. If you're a coastal elite who also does like Applebee's still, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think? Should we switch to Davos? Yeah. Don't say anything. Oh, I thought we were gonna. Uh, ice sorry. It out. What? Oh no. <laughs> what do you? What were you zone? What were you? I just. I. I'm like thinking about the subscription stuff and. Tell us. Oh, well, I'm trying to have thoughts. Like I'm trying to <laughs> think of everything, and I just um, it, it's sort of like what comes out of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like at the end of this road, are we stuck with just like subscription advertising forever? Mm -hmm. And like, what does that look like if we do start using the VR goggles? Like, will there be ads popping up? I just. Like we consume, I think it's like 10,000 ads a day. Jesus It's Christ. something nuts like that, right? And then you're being nickeled and dimed every time you turn around with subscriptions. Right. Um, and like the uh, streaming industry is trying to figure it out right now because you're right, like it is sort of like cable at this point where it's more expensive, um, but there's so much competition that they're not going to consolidate amongst themselves. And for Apple and Amazon, like they don't really have to worry about making money from the streaming model right. um but they can still charge right and and then like you have netflix and netflix is not making original content anymore and they said in the earnings that they're not going to do as much m a but clearly like they're going to partner yeah. with other companies and then indie films are down 30 percent year over year and it just i think what it ties back into and this is like the biggest leap of all time but like the nostalgia cycle loop right and so it's not necessarily that subscriptions and ads are driving that but when you think about the content that we consume that are fed by these ads i don't know if it's like challenging us right like wrestling is fine like it's good it's entertainment mm -hmm. um but like indie films are really important too mm -hmm. and then you have things like the marvel cinematic universe that are ultimately funded by this do I am I making any yeah, yeah, sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Uh, I mean, with Netflix is especially a weird one. Where, like, they're one of the only ones where, like you said, Apple, Amazon, even Hulu and stuff is owned by Disney. They can yeah. kind of like burn cash if they want to. Netflix like has to make this work, and yeah. so they're like, yeah, they're going to be doing all kinds of weird things, things they said they would never do, yeah. and it's just going to become this like weird lowest common denominator. And like we consume that, you know, and like we consume social media. And I just, I've been like really think, there's this book called Present Shock by Douglas Rushkoff. And he talks a lot about how we're changing, like digital technology isn't changing us. We're changing ourselves for digital technology. Hmm. And I just feel like when we are, you know, not forced to have these subscription models and not forced to have the advertisements, I think that's like making us become the technology. Like it's just becoming harder and harder to separate ourselves from this consumer oriented model and like we become that consumer right have like, you seen the new uh it i just saw it today it's like the disney vr and ar thing where you can walk around on it uh no i didn't see that it's did you see it yeah they're like little it's like uh <clears throat> beads that slide it, it, it looks like you could easily slip and fall but it's mm -hmm. meant to like if you put on vr goggles you can <sighs> So move just, your feet without yeah. in place it's like so a, a treadmill 360 place, treadmill but be in a new place on your goggles okay. and walk around and feel like you're walking around the louvre for oh example my gosh. yeah that's i think that's cool so these apple goggles um matthew baloney from puck which is like a big media outlet it does a lot of like movie reviews um does a lot of media news he's very very good but he reviewed the vr goggles and he was like i could totally see a world where this is a great way to watch a movie right um but then like there's this interview with 
Martin Scorsese, mm -hmm. where he talks about how important it is to go into the theater to view a movie because a movie is um, a communal experience. Yeah, and you're around people yeah. and you're all like, yeah. And I just like, so I biked here to your place and it's so isolating to be on the bike relative to the cars. And if you look in the cars, like everybody is all alone in the cars. And I just feel like the VR goggles are going to make us even more individualistic than like vehicles did. Um, and I, I just worry about that. Like it is so important that we consume media together uh, oh yeah. yeah it's all um i mean it's just gonna keep going that way and gonna it's gonna everything is gonna be more digital everything is gonna be more something served to you on an algorithm yeah um have you ever heard of nts radio yeah um, what is that do, do you, i haven't do you use it no what is nts I radio mean, this is basically like a free ad for nts radio it's like it's made my life so much better I, and i'm sure there's so many people out there who have complained about i've talked to friends who are like i hate spotify it Every day I wake up and I open it and it's just like giving me the same six yeah. playlists oh, sure. that it recommends to me every day. Yeah. And I put one on and I go, Jesus Christ, it's the same fucking songs. Same songs. And so <clears throat> Spotify probably knows that. And like, there's a frustration with that and they're trying to do things like the AI DJ, which everyone has tried out and been like, this is also awful. Like, like how did, uh, <laughs> yeah. And you know, so everyone's, it's another subscription. Everyone's paying whatever it is, $10 a month to be like, I'm unhappy with this service, but I don't know what else to do now that we've mm -hmm. traded like ownership for, uh, access, but, uh, so ownership, many, wait, ownership for access is mm -hmm. such a, I just want to pause and that's so great. That's Keep continuing. I like right, that. Like you used to own your physical CDs, media, yeah. CDs, records, yeah. tapes, whatever it was, you had it. No one could take it from library card is the, uh, the original subscription. Right. Uh, but now you pay a fee to have access to all these things. And sometimes you don't even get the access you want. Um, yeah. So yeah. someone recommended to me when I was complaining about, Spotify NTS radio, which is this like independent, uh, radio station that is basically run through an app and it might sound like a subscription model, but it's completely free. If you want to use it, you can, it's completely free to use. I do a monthly payment because I'm like, this is like supported. So, yeah. I, it's listener supported. So I do it because I'm like, I get so much value out of this. I use it every day. I'm glad to pay them. Um, and I think it's way cheaper than Spotify, what they like recommend you donate. But all day, 24 hours a day, they have stations in London, LA, New York, uh, and some other places. They have real people um, who are like very cool um, people like doing live DJ and stuff mm. coming into the studio and playing either one hour and two hour sets. And it's it's incredible. It's always new music. They have different, all different genres and stuff. They, it's so nice to, even if it's like a song, you're like, Oh, I'm not that into this. It's just nice being like, God, there's someone else on the other end of this playing it and curating it. Um, who just like knows music and they come on and talk for a little bit and you're like, this is the an incredible is experience. So yeah. Yeah. And they, <clears throat> there's also a live chat going. So they're like interacting with, um, chat and stuff. And you're like, this is just a beautiful way to like wow. experience, uh, cause it should be music. communal. Yeah. And it feels very much yeah. like that. Um, you're like laughing along with things that are happening. Sometimes there's a technical difficulty. It's just like a very beautiful, yeah. I will say I still, I, I just, it might just be that I'm unlucky, but every time I go to the movies, I am stuck right next to someone who doesn't know how to be at the movies. There was a guy when I saw the iron claw over the weekend, great movie. He he had some kind of I mean I know was he a sniffler? No, I, I, I realized that he probably couldn't help it, but I also couldn't help but be like annoyed because it was constant. He was like doing an anxious humming mm. the whole time, just hmm hmm and I just I was like, I can't ask that he's got something and I, I just have to ignore it or pretend that he's my brother and I've known him my whole life and that's all I did. I was like, that's just my brother's thing that he does. And it's just, uh, but anyway, we were talking before about how this, <laughs> this, this kind of subscription thing, um, it also comes at the cost of innovation because we're not there. Yeah, there's totally. why would a company, they're all, they're chasing we're not in that age of like getting new products and things to be excited about. It's just more services and shit that they can offer us that uh, maximizes margins. Well, right. It, yeah. it goes back to your point about ownership versus access. Like if you don't own something, you're not going to be as incentivized to innovate upon it. 
And I think that's part of the issue is people just don't feel connected to anything. Mm -hmm. And that bleeds into nihilism and lack of hope. And Right. I think Spotify is a bad product, technically. Like, I don't love the user interface. I think they change it a lot because uh, it's like, the car thing where cars don't need to be updated every year, but they're like, well, we need to sell more cars. So we need to yeah. keep changing stuff. Even if that means people aren't going to like it's, the new features. And so it's you, it, the planned obsolescence. Yeah. Too, yeah. And so you get an update to Spotify and you're like, well, what the fuck? Where is the thing I liked? And they're like, well, I don't know. We changed it. We think yeah. you want stuff to change, but, and it's low quality sound and it's just, yeah. like, but everyone's just locked into this thing. And they're yeah. like, I don't know. This is, I think I like it. <laughs> yeah, and music is so healing. I feel like I sound like insane today, but um, no. I'm like, hello. <laughs> but music is so healing, and like, I think that um, we were were we talking about this on our call on the pre-call. It, like, I feel like making no, it wasn't you guys. It was somebody else. But like, making art is very important to the human experience, and a lot of people feel separate from art. Like, they feel like, oh, if I'm not an Olympic level artist, like I can't create. And it's the same thing with like music. Like if you're not consuming things in the way that they're meant to be consumed, there's a level of abstraction that makes it hard to like fully be authentic with it. And I think that's kind of like the cognitive dissonance that a lot of people are experiencing is like you're consuming really terrible things all of the time. And then you have to pay a subscription model for it. And then you have an ad served on top of it. And so it's just like, unless you upgrade to the premium tier, but even then, like it's just not quality. And um, like everything is going back to the point of planned obsolescence. Everything is just declining in quality because of margins, because of profit. Um, and like you have PNG, they reported earnings and all of their um, revenue growth was from raising prices. And so you're still like turning around and, you know, we talk about inflation going down and it is technically, but you're still dealing with the price hikes. You're still dealing with the pressures of inflation. And I think all of this is just compounding into like a very... Um, angry person like it's very hard not to be angry Mm -hmm. at the circumstances that you're currently living in you know we have a housing crisis we have um issues with work and like um climbing the ladder at work because retirements are hard um and then you have you know these products like cars are not made as well um yeah it just it feels like every time you turn around things are falling apart and there's still a lot of hope right but i think that um it's creating a lot of issues yeah uh, the only subscription thing that I really think is good because I know firsthand is is uh, this show because uh, we put out a high quality product weekly and uh, it's uh, people are raving about it. They Come talk on, the they plan. talk about they land talk the about plan. how it's the best five dollars per month that they spend and man, it's just unbelievable the value you get out of it. Uh, but that's like how it should be you know yeah I yeah mean, it's, it's like there should be some, there are, some sort of, there are good subscriptions and there are but like patronage ones. like if you see somebody that you like doing something like sliding them yeah. five dollars yeah. like you all like um sliding them five dollars is like very important because that's how you keep creativity in the world i don't know why i'm like going off on everything she landed in la and she was like <laughs> yeah <"Okay." laughs> spirit. i think it was the bike ride over here where i almost got hit well okay let's uh speaking of cars let's shift gears <laughs> people have said that they really like that part where we switch switch gears but grind it because emil doesn't know how to drive stick do you know how to drive stick no oh man i don't know Guys. how to drive y- you know it's it's kind of like handing a baby an ipad they just intuitively know you know Although sometimes when I'm in my car, I'm like, it is kind of crazy how uh, people just kind of are good at this thing. That, that They're not it, good at it. We kill each other a lot. That's true. So <laughs> it's like the most dangerous thing you can do. That's true. Ooh, Fast yeah. Track. There's another subscription. The the, the Fast Lane thing. The, the like, Disney um, World? No, no. The, uh, that's, that is Fast Track, but I'm talking about the on that's the roads. Fast. Oh, the tolls. Yeah, toll roads. Toll roads, yeah. yeah. Where, hey, you pay f- however much a month, you get to skip traffic. It's like, fuck. God, fuck it. Yeah, him. don't subscription me on traffic. Yeah, yeah. there's, there, there's just, I'm don't just. Don't make me subscribe to a highway. I, I, I really don't even know how many things I'm subscribed to. And it kind of, I, I, it's one of those things where I, I don't even know how to check anymore. I, I guess I could check my Your billing statements. Bill. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just go, just wait for the first of the month and then go in there. <sighs> fuck. Well, because what if it doesn't bill on the first of the month, man? Sometimes it bills middle of the month. Well, so the, the shifting gears, the, the, uh, the big, Davos convention where all the elites get together and decide whether or not you're going to fucking eat bugs is, is happening. 
because that's the thing that, that that they're all telling us. That, you know, you saw about disease X, right? That's it. oh yeah oh what is it okay so the, well, so no it's what they use in their like thought exercises oh, oh, like hey like, what if we had it's like a widget yeah it's just uh, disease X for example how are we gonna plan for that and all the fucking right wing dipshits are like they're already planning it they're calling it disease X and it's got a hundred percent fatality rate and they're gonna uh uh, uh Bill Gates is already t- telling you that he's gonna give you the va- he personally is gonna inject the vaccine That's... into your dick and, and you <laughs> honestly gonna... if Bill Gates was offering that I'd go okay fine, I would take a, a dick injection from Bill Gates <laughs> sure I have already <laughs> <laughs> I'm close with we I call him Billy That's how close I am Billy with Bill G Gates. yeah. Speaking of, uh, just real fast, speaking of, of uh, vaccines, there is an entire subset of boomers who claim that they, uh, who are lying. Yeah, this has been going on for a while. I know, but it's great. I just want to show you guys. They're still doing it. So this is no a guy. No talks about COVID. This is a guy who, who says that he's got, um... oh wait, no, I think he might be joking. Well, it's just, it's kind of like. Those it's just exhausting. They want attention. It's exhausting. Yeah. 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 These people are stupid. And um wait, yeah, wait, it wait. just really reminds me of that Ted Johnson piece where this guy has like a fine life and he's like burn it to the ground. And it's like, what is Yeah, it? that was it. So people were saying it was um like because a lot of people talk about the kind of uh the the right wing rage of you know, it's coming from a very real place of economic insecurity and stuff like that. And they found this guy who's like, no, I just, I, just, I actually have hate in my heart and would like to see yeah. bad stuff happen. <laughs> yeah, no, that's kind <laughs> that's of like basically. Yeah. Ted Johnson is his name. Yeah. And that's, that's a lot of people I think is um, not to like extrapolate, but I think that's a lot of people. Um, you know, yeah, he's, he's, he owns a pricey house. He's married with three adult kids but still thinks the U.S. needs a president to tear everything down. His support with for Trump has nothing to do with the reality of his life. So it's kind of like they're living, not uh, like p- some people are living in this um, false reality. There's this quote about suburbia. I can try to find it. Can I find it really? Sure, fast? find it. Um, well, well, Kyla's finding that. So, just so everybody knows, when we do talk about Davos, it is. Um, oh, sorry. It's no, it's okay. Uh, it's the World Economic Forum's like annual meeting where basically a bunch of world leaders and politicians and rich guys, rich guys and um, corporate heads of state all get together. They all talk about ideas for how to lead the world into the next era. And famously, there's like one of them is that Klaus Schwab, mm-hmm. who uh, who who looks like a Bond villain, and he's got a nefarious accent, and he says like, "We will be, you will." Uh, wow, well, I didn't know we were gonna have so much anti-German sentiment in this episode. Well, and one of the big headlines, we'd like to say there's nothing nefarious about having a German accent. I I think one of the things that they that another kind of disease X type of thing was a few years ago, one of the headlines that came out of Davos was in the future, you will own nothing and you will be happy. And they of course took that to mean they're not going to let you own anything. Um, and they're going to like for, I think that they were underscoring that that's where business is heading, where it's going to be a subscription fucking yeah, everything. That's a great yeah. type. Of yeah. 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 I mean, fucking stinks. It's going to happen with, uh, uh, remember when the when all the like private equity firms were buying up all the all the affordable homes and all of a sudden you were seeing like Wall Street Journal articles like actually home ownership is overrated and like it's going to be sick and there should be like a subscription model the forever renters yeah uh which is insane because for decades all they say is like the the only true path to like well, financial that, security in this country is Have I ever talked uh, to you all about my favorite chart? No. Mm-mm. So it's a chart from the Federal Reserve that shows the breakdown of wealth across the um, wealth percentiles. So top 10%, all of their wealth is tied into equity and business ownership. Top 1%, same deal. But the bottom 50%, all of their wealth is in real estate. And so the only way that you're going to make money 
in that category is usually to own a home. Yeah. And that's, that's like the path. The only path to like intergenerational wealth too, where like people will have an asset. That's that the they only can path that we off. think. Yeah. If we got people to have business ownership in their business, like through ESOPs, employee stock option programs, if we got people into the stock market, did things like baby bonds, that would really help mitigate that. True. Baby bonds. I could buy a bond and a baby. I could invest in babies. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, technically, yeah, if you buy a 30 year bond, you're sort of investing in babies. There you have it, folks. You can invest in babies. You just got to buy it. Well, well yeah, because you're, you're investing, investing in the future, in the future of, the of the United States. Yeah. 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 Damn, I wouldn't. Ooh, I don't know if I would do that. Yeah, I actually don't. Well, so I, don't know. This is, I think this is a really interesting point because people like whenever I tell them that I talk about the economy, they're like, I hate the United States. And I'm like, well, there's no other alternative, right? Like if you look at China, if you look at China's stock market, they're tanking. Oh man. They're yeah. trying to inject, I think like 218 million. <laughs> Billion. <laughs> Billion. Yeah. Um, Which is, seems really small yeah. for the size of China. Yeah, I think that's all it's they might need. Much. And then Russia is not an alternative. You know, India just surpassed Hong Kong as the fourth biggest stock market. So there's just no alternative to the United States. So you can say, not to like pick on you. No, but no, like, no. go you, ahead. Pick on him. <laughs> you can say like, oh, I hate... Da, 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 da. Like, but like I wouldn't bet on the future of the... Yeah, but like, there are what things are you going to bet on? Yeah. Uh... I think it's like hard to bet on the world. I think is, I think it's like the, a scary prospect of like no one seems up to the task of handling any of the That's looming fair. problems we have. Yeah. Uh, I, so I found the tweet is like, hit us. Give, give it to okay. us. So this was talking about um, the people like the Ted Johnsons who live in the suburbs have a relatively decent life by historical standards. Um, this is from J. G. Ballard's novel Kingdom Come. The suburbs dream of violence, asleep in their drowsy villas, sheltered by benevolent shopping malls. They wait patiently for the nightmares that will wake them into a more passionate world. And this person had quote tweeted this picture of a person named Gretchen Smith, who says, my name is Gretchen Smith and I am voting for President Donald J. Trump. Do you read me? Is this too much Second Amendment? Hashtag Happy New Year. Hashtag MAGA. Hashtag Trump 2024. And the picture is her with like a gigantic gun. God we'll damn. have to pop that up and on some, here. Like fucking bombs, maybe. <laughs> but I think that's a lot of um, the populace. That's like there is obviously, like we talked about early. There's serious economic issues, right? But then I do think you have a subset of the population that just dreams of violence. Um. Yeah. yeah. It, it's funny, like, you, it goes back to the communal thing. I think everyone is just, like, so fucking afraid of each other. To, yeah. Like, it's just this bizarre thing where everyone is, like, sitting at home. Yeah. yeah. And they're just, like, everything out there is trying to fucking kill me. And mm -hmm. if I don't get armed to the teeth, yeah. then they're going to get me first. Or so. It's yeah. a terrifying... Notable dipshit Mike Cernovich uh, tweeted the other day. He has me blocked, but I I still go look because it's it's a it's for me it's that sounds a, healthy. It's it's <laughs> looking at what the like the other side's thought leaders are are thinking, and I I find it um, very aggravating and stressful, which is an addiction. But um, it's also it can be eye opening. And he had this one fucking moron dipshit take that it was. I think he said. They're releasing thousands of prisoners, violent prisoners out of Venezuela, and Biden is personally importing them here with the 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 ex, like explicit goal of skinning you and your family alive. That one's actually true though. And then it was like buy guns, buy like that's what they're all pushing. Charlie Kirk and um Jack Posobic and all these fucking guys are like, oh no, you gotta like since they they don't have good ideas on how to like govern and lead the country forward in Ooh. a cohesive way they yeah. resort to fear yeah that's of just like they're coming to kill you and your family they're gonna they're coming for your way of life it's replacement theory kind of shit S therefore the only thing left to do is arm yourself learn how to fight yeah. and like take it take it in your own hands and get a cool trad wife Oh yeah. man! Oh uh, well, God! Well, that that's so that's an interesting phenomenon because it's all economics, right? Like ballerina farm, for example, like that ballerina that, farm. It's this very popular TikTok account of this woman who has like a twenty thousand dollars stove, right? Like, oh but she's, yes, she's living like this trad wife lifestyle, has eight kids. Um, all that became very popular in the last year, kind of when the anti-abortion stuff was coming around. Um, like the trad wife's really begin to get traction but it's sort of like this monetized traditional like content farm like it's not real 
Right. right? Well, that's the funny thing. Someone pointed out, like, you know, all these people are making money off you, right? Like, yeah. she has a job, which is this weird uh, cosplay of, like, like a 1950s yeah. wife, housewife. And you guys are all, like, en- engaging with it and, and yeah. g- giving her money to, like, it's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's it, it's interesting kind of like what comes into style and um I don't quite I I kind of know what the trap wife uh era means but it's it's um there's like something a little concerning about it because you know like women fought really hard not to have that lifestyle and if you if that's the path you want that's fine but um yeah it's just it's interesting I'm trying to be a trad husband you, you can dude yeah you already are I'm in my a, eyes. Um, be a drunk and um, never talk about my feelings and then oh. uh, have a heart attack when I'm 51. Dude, I wow. I thought that you'd be like a homemaker husband. Oh, yeah, that, either that. I'm either, yeah, either way I could go. Yeah. Stay at home dad or uh, awful drunk. Personally, I can actually do it all. I can, I can provide and still make time for wife and children and do the laundry and, and shit. But uh, if, if you can't handle that, that's... <laughs> That's totally fine too. Yeah, I could be a violent drunk and <laughs> still do all my chores. <laughs> but you're only violent toward like drywall. No. <laughs> what are you hitting a dog? No. <laughs> the dog's my so best friend. I can't say I can't say what <laughs> line, but you're you're insinuating. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, so these people, it's like to that to to going back to that quote, it's it's this uh, fear of the other, fear of each other, Fe- and and they want to be isolated in their big homes, and that's what a, that's part of the trad wife like um, I don't know Venn diagram is wanting to go back to just it's always like this is what they're taking from you, and it's like the white picket fence going to work and. Having a briefcase next to you in the car. Yeah, having a briefcase, whatever the fuck you think it your is job funny. is. We're talking about this while, like, we wanted to also talk about the Argentinian leader's uh, really? yeah. uh, speech at Davos. And, like, he was taking aim specifically at, like, any of these collective projects or, like, uh, community-oriented things and was, like... I mean, the whole thing is basically... Basically, greed is good. He was basically doing fucking Gordon Gecko and being like, big business is, is here to stay. And if you want to get in our way, and, we'll like, fucking kill you. I was thinking about this on the plane this morning because like, I do think capitalism is good and it has a role. Because like, I was like, is my plane going to blow a door out? And Because I, I was thinking about Boeing and like how the doors have been blowing out and whatever. And like, like, there, like some element of what he was saying has an element of truth like there's a thread of reality to some of it like big business is important but i think like everybody ends up in these extreme ends of the distribution that makes it impossible to have a conversation and then therefore makes it impossible to have progress like you know capitalism is important it has allowed for a lot of the luxuries that we have today like the fact that you're able to get doordash right like you know that would be tough under other circumstances but is that a good thing the fact uh, that he's able to get so the I, don't, I think good is subjective, right? Yeah. Like, it, is it good that somebody has a job delivering him food and he's able to get? But we're food also easily? like those are they're we've not created like really bad really jobs and like it's almost like a subscription well, it's like model the fragmentation of, a job. of, of jobs. Yeah. yeah. And uh, re- real fast, there's a. I saw a video of a of a of a refrigerator from like the 1950s or 60s, and it's so well made. Is it the quality? Yes, yeah. but and it's like capitalism. I feel like is good to a limit, and then it just turns into this hyper inflated greed machine. Where well, why are we gonna fucking make a, a product that's gonna last forever? Uh, how are we gonna get return returning right. customers? <clears throat> yeah, like, yeah but that's so, the thing. No matter how you feel about capitalism, it's like this guy's talking about how i mean any of these guys any form of regulation now begins to be it's like well you're a fucking communist if you want to have like building codes or whatever it's like what the fuck yeah uh yeah if you want to have like any consumer protections it's like you're a fucking get get out of the way of business (laughs) right get the free market will figure out because if a company is bad and poisons water then people aren't going to use that company anymore it's not true yeah yeah, the irs is um doing direct, direct file and I made a video about that being like TurboTax has no purpose anymore. Like, yay, you know, they're rent seekers. And people were like, TurboTax has added a lot of value to society. And I'm like, 
Are you just arguing to argue? Like, yeah. Like, oh, people. Yeah. Well, people also don't like to hear that the government um, can do anything. Yeah. Yeah. The trust in the government is. I, yeah. I have a. No, you have a what? <laughs> Let it out. No. Nobody's listening anymore. <laughs> nobody's listening anymore. It's no, toward the end of the show. They're listening. This we are, real but freaks. nobody nobody's really tuned in. They're they're people at this will point. jump all over this you. Is, yeah, yeah. The, 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 no, everybody <laughs> everybody in our audience <laughs> loves you and they'll they'll Well, so I've been thinking a lot about words and like language. Hell yeah. And how <laughs> the, so we have three different definitions of living paycheck to paycheck, right? And so when people talk about living paycheck to paycheck, it's kinda like which version are they talking about and then when you see that statistic that 60 percent of people are living paycheck to paycheck that is a study that is issued by a financial services firm in order to sell their financial services wait can you talk about the different definitions of paycheck to yeah paycheck? um yes i can i let me pull it up really fast because i don't have them memorized three different ones um yeah there's but because i know what you're saying and i think there are a lot of people who even who are in a like stable financial situation yeah. that feel like they are living in a paycheck yes. to paycheck situation because i mean we're all waiting and I don't, next want, I don't want to mitigate that, right? Like, right. I, I don't want to say like, oh, you know, you're not actually, because this is part of the issue is talking about the economy is people do have these lived experiences that are very important to take into consideration. But when we talk about different definitions of paycheck to paycheck, number one is the family is struggling to make ends meet and would be unable to finance normal expenses like rent and groceries. Number two, the lack of a substantial savings buffer. Number three, not having money left over after having contributed to savings. So there's all three of these different definitions. And then these studies will come out being like, 60% of people live paycheck to paycheck, 80% of people, and it's always using a different definition or it's not polling in the right way. Mm. Um, and like, so when we talk about living paycheck to paycheck, that's an example of language, specifically in economics, not meaning what we think it means. And so language is a very important to developing a narrative and it's very important to eventually establishing trust. And so if people feel like they can't trust the narrative, then the trust in the broader society is gonna erode as well. And so that's something that I'm really worried about is like the words that we use to describe the economy like don't always make sense to people. Like a lot of people don't know that inflation going down doesn't mean that things are getting cheaper. Mm -hmm. It just means that they're getting less expensive, right. less fast. Right. 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 And so I, it's just like all of these words that we're using are not resonating in the right way. And I worry that, that is leading to like, this is the societal erosion of, of trust and it's it creating a lot of issues. I feel like I've just been like, everything's bad, but no. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. That's probably why everyone loves Trump, right? He makes it easy. He's like, well, he that simplifies. guy's gay. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his delivery with the Ron DeSantis thing, oh, where he was like, Ron, retire. Uh, yeah. It's like, he's incredible. Yeah. I mean, just, it, it's so easy to be, you're like, first off, this is the funniest guy that's ever lived. So uh, and yeah. He's I funny when he's not in office. Like, buddy, yeah. just go out on tour. You want to make money? Just like You'd go out, good. run your mouth. I don't care. It's crazy. Did you see his, uh, we talked about um, his, I know, I burped again. <laughs> he, he, I'm drinking bubbly drink. I would subscribe to every episode. I would like grab your heart. I would. Well, I'm just. I would subscribe to Diet Coke if Diet Coke. Like I don't know. If someone. What would it be a reasonable price for you monthly? Hmm. That's a great question. I know. Thank you. Uh, Because I get pissed off when I go to when I I went to fucking Albertsons the other day, which is my local grocer. One of them. Since you can't, I'm not going to let you narrow it down. Not that it matters. Who fucking cares? But (laughs) they had. uh, They had. Buy, buy two, get two, 12 packs of Diet Coke. And I was pissed off. You know why? Because there were only three left. <laughs> there were only three left. And I also didn't have a shopping cart. I had the hand basket. And I was like, if I had fucking known that Diet Coke was on sale, I would go, I would have brought a cart, but I didn't. So you know what I did instead? I grabbed one 18 pack, like a fucking chump. To that end... I would subscribe for twenty dollars a month uh, if I got. I, I I really don't know. The unit economics would have to be worked out, or a toilet paper subscription. Not that I need it anymore, but that's just something. You know, we could really innovate here, guys. We could we could trick. We could not trick, but we could come up with a, a subscription plan of value. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. We are already doing it. Oh. <laughs> with the show, no. What I mean, like a, a physical product. Like, hey, you wanna you wanna get some shit once a month? 
Goodie bags. Ooh, there we go. Everybody loves a goodie bag. They basically do that already. They have those things where it's like. Yeah, but it's for dogs. Bark box. Bark box, dude. Human box. Did you just make that up? No, No. bark box. Oh, fuck. Come on. The DTC, the direct to consumer brand stuff was very popular in the 2010s. Yeah. Yeah. So like anything that you could have gotten delivered, there was a company for it. Yeah. Yeah. Bark I don't, box. Man, I, I how about pick up? Give me an errand. I'll go pick it up. That that's um uh rabbit, task rabbit. No, no, no. Like instead of it getting instead of the diet coke getting delivered, I'll, I'll just go pick it up. Save me the fee. I'll go pick you it up. You can do that. That's just a convenience <laughs> store. <laughs> Ben's inventing convenience stores. <laughs> no, just like a place with like <laughs> with everything like, that you can possibly need. Things that you, you know, you need around the house. I'll go get uh, them from there. Uh, but I mean, we laugh, but like, I do feel like people, there are going to be people like that where it, it's going to be so commonplace to, I don't know. My, my first thought when I need something is not Amazon. And I think it is whoa. most people's thought. I don't. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't. I yeah. don't. Yeah. Amazon, it, they, they sold little, um, little buttons that, it, and it was rolled out with just a few brands, Tide, Kleenex, whatever. And the idea was you would put it in your pantry or whatever. No so way. if you ran, yeah. So if you ran out, you would just press the button and it would order, it would place the order for wow. you, which is, you know, it's pretty convenient. Until little kids are like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually, uh, fun fact, when I worked at BuzzFeed, I did a oh, sponsored post. Happened. Yeah, I did a sponsored post for he was the that. Fifth try guy. <laughs> no. I, I, I remember when I worked at BuzzFeed, I was so. He cheated so, on his wife way before it was. Oh, yeah, way before the other met. guy. Yeah. Um, I, I got pissed off because um, the try guys, I was like, man, I could do this. You guys get me You're in very there. I'll, similar to I'll try that, yeah. some shit. I don't like that. Don't tell me that. <laughs> They're all fucking chumps. But so anyway, Donald Trump's Truth Social is sort of still being courted by one of those SPACs, ticker symbol DWAC. Oh, Dwack. Dwack. And it went from like 10 bucks a share to like 50 over the since he won the Iowa caucus. Yeah, because me and all my boys buying it up. No, you're not. Mm-hmm. No, you're not. You're lying. We never talked about Davos. We still can. Yeah, that was my bad. I totally. It's okay. I was I mean, like, Ugh. so Malay, the the Argentinian guy, just went up there and he. It's we, just, what? I don't know. These people are just like. <laughs> want us to eat bugs? No, it's just like. He like brings it. It's just so performative, mm, mm, mm. and like that's like what I really struggle with with Davos and like Jamie Dimon's speech too. What like, was what the gist of Jamie Dimon's speech? Jamie, and everything's good actually, because that's what he usually says. Um, I mean, no, like he was talking about like how Trump was right in some aspects, which you know, like there's room for error and, and everything, and like there's some truth to that. Uh, you know, he he just he's clearly running for president. Like everything is just posturing and pageantry and. Mm-hmm. It just, um, I don't know, it's a disservice. He's going to be another Bloomberg in that case, where it's yeah, just like, yeah. the only way you're going to work as a billionaire running for president is if you are Donald Trump. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know, unless he offers me like uh, an extra 10,000 points on my Chase Sapphire card. I would, for 10,000 points? I mean, that's like... It's a hundred bucks. a hundred bucks. I, I, he'd get my vote no, for No, you got to buy me for more. How much? 50,000 points? 500 bucks? No way, dude. How Higher? much? What's your vote worth? At least a thousand. No way. Thousand yeah. bucks? So that's a hundred thousand points. I mean, at, at base level, at base offering. At least. Yeah. I like seeing six figures in the old point. Um, in the old point bank. I, I want to play this clip of um of Jamie Dimon talking about Bitcoin. It's only twenty four seconds long, but it's it's just really funny because he's like a moron. It's really. Yeah, but gold's limited in supply. So it's Bitcoin, and it's been used. Uh, so you think so, huh? I do. I think there's a good chance that when Bitcoin, when we get to that 20 million Bitcoins, no, that Satoshi's going to come on there, (laughs) laugh hysterically, go quiet, all Bitcoins going to be erased. I think. (laughs) What? First of all, he calls him Satoshi, and he says that once once we hit the the limit of Bitcoins, he's going to come out and erase it all. That'd be a good bit. It's impossible to happen. Also. Satoshi would be erasing <laughs> tens of billions of dollars of his own money if if the person was still around. Uh, maybe dead. I don't know if oh, you're yeah. factoring in the fact that maybe Satoshi is the Joker, <laughs> man. 
Ah, and Jamie Diamond is Batman. <laughs> oh man, Jamie Diamond could be Batman, but he's afraid of a different animal, so it's a different. Maybe he's Cowman. He's afraid of uh, cows instead of bats because you know Batman's were by cow- yeah, Batman's we're afraid of bats. Yes, yeah. Batman's afraid of bats. <laughs> is that you didn't know that? I've never even seen the movie. You never seen any Batman? I've never really seen any movies. Okay, so check it out. Oh, you know we've covered this yeah. actually. You have seen Little Bear or <laughs> Brother Bear? Brother Bear. Bruce Wayne <laughs> and Titanic, but I've never like one seen half Titanic. of it. Oh, yeah. what was the other movie? It crashes. Huh? The boat crashes. <laughs> oh, so Bruce Wayne is a uh, a billionaire's He's son. He's gonna explain Batman and right now. and he and his parents are going out to the opera. This is not interesting. <laughs> 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 Wait, I'm just telling you. So he, 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 his parents get killed. I do like when by the show becomes Ben on a bad date. And ben, he, he gets killed. His this parents. This is not interesting. Hold on. He, well, I mean, you, you didn't know. Why uh, have you a, seen those in the wild? Like the bad dates in the wild where like the girl is like this and the guy is still like talking about That couldn't about be me. That would never happen. He's afraid of bats. And so he makes it part of his personality to like confront his fear. Well, that's, like, I'm that's afraid. Admirable. I'm afraid of the bats, so I might as well make them my whole identity. Which to me is funny because what if he was afraid of something else? Sure. Millipedes, right? Millipede man. <laughs> <laughs> Millipede man. Millipede. Well, so <laughs> there's so much more I want to talk about. So say it, Davos. I don't what know you Davos say? crypto. Uh, there's the pastor who who did the, the scam. scam. God told I mean, him. should we play part of that? It's pretty good. Here we go. It's just the mailman. It's just the mailman. So this this pastor um, fleeced his flock. Nice. Out of uh, out of one point three million dollars in crypto, and it's just a, he released a nine minute long apology. But this excerpt from it is just too right, good. Looks like he's got a nice Caitlin waterfront and I home. Are being charged in a civil charge. Uh, from the Colorado Securities and Exchange Commission for basically selling millions of dollars worth of cryptocurrency that is deemed worthless by the state. Now, the reason that they're saying that it's worthless is because there is no exit for people who have bought. (laughs) The reason they're saying it's worthless is because you can't sell it. (laughs) An exchange, the exchange technology failed, things went downhill. And from that point forward, we've just been we've just been waiting on the Lord literally for a miracle. So. The charges are that Caitlin and I pocketed $1.3 million, pocketed. and I just want to come out and say that those uh, charges are true. So there's been $1.3 million that's been taken out of, I think it was a total of $3.4 million. But out of that one3 half a million dollars went to the IRS, and a few hundred thousand dollars went to a home remodel that the Lord told us to do. So how this whole thing started is the Lord told us uh, in 21 to walk away from our marketing company, and he said, I'm going to do a new thing. Walk away from and then what? He took- Parking company? Okay us into this cryptocurrency. It was a different cr- cryptocurrency other than index coin at the time. Well, that cryptocurrency turned out to be a scam. And so the Lord says, give that to them, but also give them a 10x. And give I'm, them a 10x. Why is the Lord telling you to scam people? I don't know, man. I, I, I think it's that he was hop, he hopped on board at something not knowing that it was a crypto scam. Because and the then, Lord told him to. Yeah, the Lord told him to, but I, I don't know. I'm just doing what the Lord told me, man. Uh, I, I wanted to say something about Elon because, uh, man, you're jumping all over the goddamn place. No, I know. Well, we're toward the end of the episode anyway. So, but, but that doesn't mean you can just give up. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up at all. Okay. It's just, uh, there, there was something in the notes here about, um, the tech billionaires defecting to populism oh, yeah, and Elon is probably, and Jamie Dimon is a good example mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. And Elon is probably the poster child for it because he's he's all gung-ho this he's, is what i just cannot understand though is that like ordinary people uh placing all their like hopes and becoming a weird uh just like rooting for these billionaires it's just the most bizarre thing to me like watching well it, i think it's because they they want to be that right mm-hmm. And so, like, it's like if you go up against Elon Musk, you're telling me I can never be Elon Musk. Yes, like that you is never sort of will the... be Elon Musk. <laughs> like, it's just, it's all so ridiculous. It's I've... just like, I don't know how you wouldn't have an adversarial position to that. Even if you had, even if you were a millionaire, you have a much better chance of going broke and living on the street than you do of becoming Elon Musk rich. It reminds me of that. still be adversarial to That him. worst guy, the worst guy in the NBA saying like, I'm closer to LeBron James than you are to me. Oof. 
in in terms of skill. Wait, what? It, it's similar to that. No, that's the seems worst like the guy. No, the worst guy in the NBA. It's like <laughs> I'm closer to LeBron James than you are to me. There's such a gulf between being a millionaire and billionaire <laughs> that you are closer to being broke. Oh, yeah. than you are to being a billionaire, aka LeBron James. Man, that was fucking stupid. I'm sorry, you guys. But no, uh, um, shit. Yeah, God damn it. I got thrown uh, off again. Sorry. The fucking... Uh, the, the Don't apologize. Elon, wait, wait. You, you were just saying about... Um, like all these ordinary people... Rootin' tootin' for... For, for, for billionaires now. For billionaires. Yeah. Just... Um, <laughs> 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 Okay. Ah, oh, shit. And what were you saying? <laughs> don't help him. I don't know. You were saying uh, the populism. Oh yeah, I I was probably uh, saying Jamie Dimon. No, yeah, but it was Elon. Was there something about something well, that he did or said recently? Oh, what hasn't that man? Said? Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Have you seen the guy on FinTwit, Finance Twitter, who <laughs> he puts out a thread almost daily doing his analysis about. How the robots, the Tesla robot, is going to bring Tesla. Oh, Sawyer? Is that his name? He's going it, to, it, it's like, it, it's, uh, it's piggybacking off of the, the never-ending cheerleading for these guys. And this guy's one of them, probably because he made millions of dollars in Tesla stock. And yeah, therefore, that guy, is like a I can kind of understand, right? And that's the thing. What, like, you see people with, uh, People being like, oh my God, all these billionaires at Davos are like fawning over Millet. And it's like, that makes total sense. Like they're, <laughs> yeah. they want global leaders like this who are like, please, uh, yeah, like come dismantle any um, have infrastructure it. we have and yeah. uh, <clears throat> and introduce austerity measures everywhere and um, just make this, make this whole place um, hospitable so for, you know, our huge corporations but and so like i understand <laughs> <laughs> but it's still dick riding like he's still like oh yeah they but if you have a financial stake in it i get it i don't understand like the the normal ass oh yeah the ian uh, miles chung guys just God, anybody yeah. Who, oh yeah has he been in your replies yeah what does he say call you an idiot he's or is in your he... replies he's been there a couple of times yeah in what capacity supportive he's just, no he's like antagonistic dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As someone who does that to other people, uh, it is. I've been doing it to Bill Ackman a lot, and it does feel good to just be like, cry well, baby I mean, loser. You're just zeros and ones to these people. Like, it's just a projection of their own insecurities, right? No offense. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I've caught myself when I do that with Elon, and when I'm in his reply, because like, he, he shows up on my fucking feed. It's not real. None of it's real, you know? I know, but I'm like, I shouldn't even reply because I feel pathetic doing this. I feel yeah. stupid. Because it's just, yeah, he, oh my God. It's, I mean, he quote retweeted something with the exact phrase that we used to make fun of him. It was the. Curious. Yeah. Oh, this is, yeah. It was something like that. It was like, uh, this needs to be investigated. Someone was, should look into this. Yeah. It's all like, <laughs> he's just retweeting like, 4chan the, yeah, conspiracies. Yeah, it really is a lot. It's exhausting. Well, hmm, should we go into bonus? Or should we keep going with the... Nah, I feel like this is a good time to stop and go into buzz. Hey, you guys, go to the... Yeah, I feel like <laughs> Ben's getting a little loopy, and uh, I, we can't have that... Uh, we can't have Ben loopy on main. So I'm we, going to China next we're week. Gonna put him oh, in. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm going to China next week. I'm going to ask... I, I'm going to like the manufacturing district, so... If anybody wants me to man get something manufactured, apparently I can just like walk up to yeah, whatever. So DM Ben if you want him to manufacture yeah. something. For I you. should try. It. I and should try to back. come up with something to ta go and have them make a prototype of. What can what could we? Let's take advantage of this, man. Yeah, we'll talk about that in the bonus. I mean, we could <laughs> could invent a new cereal. Magic spoon. Watch no, out. they already We're did coming. it. Nope. They already did. They, did they perfected it because there's no sugar and it's high protein and it's tasty. We are going to the bonus now. Yeah, but also, uh, I do have exciting news, but um, I think I will wait until it's finished. Can I can I talk about my book? Yes. Yes, please. Oh, yeah, plug. Um, please buy my book on Amazon. <laughs> you got to get more than that. Yeah. What do they search? It's called In This Economy by Kyla Scanlon, and it talks about the economy, inflation, labor market, Federal Reserve, 
everything that you need to know. And April thirtieth. April thirtieth. Not thirty first. And 31st. you can pre order it now. You can pre order it now. Yeah. Pre order. Pre orders are big. You got to pre order yeah. it to help out Kyla. Please help out Kyla. Also mm-hmm. at Kyla Scan. I'm pretty sure Everything's in pre orders now. You got to pre order. Yeah. Yeah. And let's see, what else? Uh, oh, yeah, patreon.com slash paypigspod. By the way, should I tell them what we're planning on doing? No. Are you sure? Yes. Just to prime no, no, them for it? Do, no, no. Okay, okay. Well, but go. But no, I will, we could say this. As we're, like, joking about the subscriptions and stuff, we are we like are very invested in this and not just trying to, like, squeeze things and we want to make it way better for people, so we're working on that. We can say that. And it's we're as soon as it's ready, we're going to let people know, and then we're going to do it. And I can't wait to fuck around in China, eat being chilling. Okay. It's ice cream. Yeah, and smoke a cigarette. Great. Sorry, mom, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to do it. When I have some of that Chinese beer in me. Good stuff. Yeah, and cold noodles. <laughs> okay, oh. we're going anyway, to Anyway, we'll see you Bye. over there. Bye.